Doctors. Uh, Morgan, let's start with you. I mean, has it changed the way we see food? Has the day been a watershed moment, do you think? Well, for me, I've seen this coming for quite a while, but I think for most people, it probably is a, a, new, uh, a new thing to experience, to think that we can actually now grow our own meat as opposed to just so grow our excited. own vegetables. Well, I think it's interesting because I think it's another possibility of what the future might hold. And science is always trying to push forward and we're always looking for new products. And being in the UK, we're the most trend-driven country in the world and we always want something new, something to talk about. And this is a great example of that. Uh, and Mark Lloyd, I mean, as, a, as a chef yourself and a man who loves food, I'm sure, um, is this everything you hate, the idea of almost something that's man-made? I'm really, really concerned about the nutritional value in it. The fact that we're growing a muscle that we then have to add flavours to and colours to and mask it to get it to the point where it's palatable for us to want to eat. Now, all through this today, we've all talked about the texture and the mm -hmm. flavour and the colour. What's the nutritional value of eating this? And is it ever going to be cheap enough for the people who really, really need it to be able to afford it? I don't know. And we know it's made of protein, so there must be some nutritional value in there, I suppose. Well, I think in a lot of foods that we eat, there's no nutritional value in a lot of what we eat, but we eat for entertainment. And I think that there's the divide, really. is. So is this just a show, then? Well, at the moment, it's a little bit of show because, of course, it's an experiment and it's it's a possibility, like anything. I mean, I think when TVP came on the market in the 70s, you know, this vegetable protein kind of lumps, you know, we, it didn't really um, add anything that was of nutritional interest, I suppose. But it's an option and it's a bit like corn or tofu. It goes places eventually and some people like to have choices and options and this is another one of those. And I suppose ultimately, Mark, they've got to get the taste right, haven't they? Because no one's going to buy this on supermarket shelf if it doesn't taste like a proper steak or a proper hamburger. Absolutely, and I think that the fact that we're having to add flavours and add colours and add, it's taking away from everything that we advocate as chefs, that we want people to eat naturally and not eat processed food and know about the food that they've bought. I just genuinely believe this will never ever replace meat and the environmental argument doesn't really massively work because we're still going to be using cows for other things. How about we look at the food that we waste? We waste a sixth of our food. So that goes into landfill and gets turned into methane and greenhouse gases. Why don't we look at the food that we've already got and how we can use that more efficiently before we start looking at things like this? I mean, I know you, you look at the future of food. That's your job, a fascinating yes. job. So yeah. in 50 years' time, if you get your crystal ball out, or oh. even 20... <laughs> that's, that's, well, a guess, that's a guessing job, but, 50. But. Because, well, that's what the scientists are saying today, that if we oh. don't sort this out now... Because we know that livestock causes real problems for the environment, doesn't it? In terms of grazing spaces around the world, methane gas around the world. And also some people think it's very inhumane the way that they're, they're farmed. I think over the last 35 years we've developed a real um, unrealistic expectation of what food is and our relationships to food. And I think that's probably the issue in some of the stuff that Mark yeah. uh, touched upon. It's that you know we, we're paying less and less. We're expecting to be able to buy two for one, to pay nothing for it, and then expect quality from that. And farmers are having to cut corners, and we're seeing lots of uh, meat scares, food scares, because of those corners that have been cut. But we're also buying it and throwing it away. That's right. OK, Instead so if this burger, probably. just to get back to the burger, if this burger was in a supermarket 20 years' time, Mark, would you be buying it? Uh, I would hope that I'm still able to buy a real cow from a real farm. If this is the option and it becomes... Uh, viable for people that can really, really need it and can't afford it any, to eat cleverly and get that protein any other way, I fully back the technology. But I think we need to understand it better first. Okay, what would you say? I wouldn't, I'm not saying I would buy it or not buy it, but I think that there are other things, other arguments that aren't just about flavour or taste or about environmental issues. But, but can you see people going to a big supermarket and deciding between meat that we know has come from cow and meat that's been made absolutely. in the laboratory. Oh, absolutely. And people will go for the laboratory one for lots of different other reasons because people make different choices. Interesting stuff. Thank you very much for joining me tonight.